Have you ever watched an episode of Downton Abbey, which documented the lives of the Earls of Grantham in 1920s England? You may have noticed the different titles used in the series, like Viscount Gillingham, Baron Merton, Marquis of Hexham. In this series, called The Peerage of England Explained, we will look through the different ranks of the nobility and dive into their origins and history. Before we start, here are the ground rules of the peerage. 1. Women cannot inherit. Only legitimate heirs are favoured. And lastly, if no legitimate heirs are present, the title becomes extinct. Titles of nobility are given through letter patents by the Sovereign of the United Kingdom. The monarch is the discretionary of all titles and can revert and relapse them at their free will. They also have the power to create new titles at their pleasure. This is how the peerage began. The oldest title of the peerage is the Earl, created during the Anglo-Saxon times. Back then, Earls could raise armies, hold courts and tax peasants, as well as fine criminals. They acted as minor kings ruling over large divisions of England. Under them were shires, headed by sheriffs. They raised money for the king and kept one-third of the taxes. The conquest of 1066 brought a series of changes to England. Most importantly, William the Conqueror changed the system of rule, making shires the largest subdivisions, and now the power of the earls was the same of a Norman count, and hence shires were now called counties. Sheriffs had more of the administrative duties, and earls became sheriffs of their own counties. And though the title of the earl was not abandoned, the feminine form was called countess. After the death of Henry I, his only legitimate heir was the then Holy Roman Empress Matilda. The English were hesitant of this accession, as a woman had never ruled England before. Her cousin, King Stephen, beat her to the Palace of Westminster by raising loyal followers. After he became the king, he restored the power of earls, granting his men the title and gifting them castles in return. Once again, the earls grew powerful, holding courts and even minting their own coins. After Henry II came into power, he found it unimaginable to rule without the interference of powerful earls. So he took back the castles and dissolved away the autocracy of the earls. Now they were answerable to the king for their actions. Subsequent English kings gave more and more governing roles to sheriffs, though earls were still stalwart figures of the administration of the kingdom. One of the defining differences between sheriffs and earls after the collapse of earldoms was that earls still kept one-third of the money they made for the king, which was later made to be fixed at a certain rate. Sheriffs were again paid fixed salaries and given all the money to the king. Into the 13th century, the earls were only below the sovereign and princes in social order. During this time, becoming an earl was done in an elaborate ceremony. The monarch tied a sword round the belt. By the early middle 13th century, the power of the earls had fallen dramatically, but they proved their power again with the deposition of Edward III. Earls ruled over earldoms and are addressed as the Right Honourable, the Lord and Lady, followed by their titles. Daughters of earls are styled Lady and their sons are called the Honourable, followed by the forename and surname. You have wondered why earls get weird titles. Why is the Earl of Grantham called the Earl of Grantham when his seat was actually in Downton? That is because 
Very often, shires and nobles had associations for a long time, and the earl may have grown and developed his property and estate elsewhere, which goes to form his seat. That is why the Earl of Oxford, for example, bears the name of his assigned county, not where he developed his property or where he resides. This concept was easier to understand when shires existed, but now, with their disappearance, it may seem confusing why a noble bears namesake of a place not related to him. Earls are also the lowest rank of the peerage who can hold subsidiary titles. Subsidiary titles require a whole video of their own. Earls wear coronets, small crowns intended for nobles, and earldoms may be hereditary or for a lifetime, which are normally gifted to prime ministers. Thank you for watching such videos. They take time to create. We hope you hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. The second part of the series will be on the brave barons. Stay tuned. Thank you for watching a Dero and TGS film.